Hey everybody, welcome back to the Comic Qua. It's me, the Outcast Angel, and today let's talk about issue four of Oblivion Song. It's out. Go get your copy because this is such an exciting issue. Not only that, it uh, it's featuring an amazing, an amazingly gorgeous cover. I am always going to be in love with these covers because uh, uh, Lorenzo Di Felici and Annalisa Leone, dream team guys. I am loving what these guys are doing. Anyway. First off, let me address this. I know my wall is different. I moved stuff around and uh, it obviously gave me a lot more, well, a lot more space than uh, I had before. So the thing is, my wall is a lot wider than it looks and so, or what I show on camera. And I'll be doing a video to kind of, you know, show off this wall and all my other uh, comic walls, uh, well, in my room. And, uh... And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. I mean, as is, it gave me a lot more space because before I ran out of space because I only had it on this one section of the wall and I was running out. So I had to fix that. So it's going to be a little weird, but you know, as I do Walking Dead videos, I'm going to be throwing up comics up there. So we'll, we'll fill it out together. Anyway, we start off with uh, Keith. We actually learned his name here. Uh, we, actually, we start off with Keith. If you guys remember him last issue, he was on the cover of last issue. Um, he tried to kill Nathan after he thought Nathan was going to kill him. But what Nathan was trying to do, he was trying to transport him back to Earth with this dart. Um, so Nathan ended up leaving one of his transport darts behind. And Keith took it to uh, the outskirts of the city that's been transported to Oblivion. And there he meets a small group of... Uh, I guess outsiders, I'll call them. But he's not exactly welcomed with uh, open arms. They call him Killer. And, you know, it's we get to find out exactly what happens here. So when he shows them that he has uh, one of the transport darts, the leader, Maria, uh, she springs into action, jumping through the air like a badass, and uh, uh, jumps right in front of him and takes the dart from him. And so she's like, where'd you get this? Uh, he tells them, it was fired at me by the hooded man. And this sets her off because she's like, the hooded, like, you saw the hooded man? How recently? Where? Uh, first, Keith wants to talk to Ed, the leader of this group. But uh, the group isn't exactly negotiating because uh, Maria looks him dead in the eyes and says, show us, show me now or we will kill you. And I mean, this takes Keith back a little bit because I guess he wasn't expecting this or maybe he figured just as much be and she's she continues with you think any one of us would hesitate after what you did to your wife and daughter what happened but he uh Keith automatically denies this and Maria kind of dismisses it as uh yes yes the faceless man we've heard all your lies he says that uh that wasn't me and so who are these faceless men exactly? And so um, they have uh, Keith. Uh, Keith kind of gives up. And so he's, he starts to lead them through this uh, tangle of like vegetation. All this weird stuff going on. But look at the detail on this uh, one panel, guys. It is absolutely beautiful. It like, oh, th these, these guys are really doing something great here. I mean, I... I don't think I, I've ever been as absorbed into the artwork of a comic as much as this one because it's just, it's beautiful. It's it's just, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm gushing too much about it. Anyway, Keith is trying to, you know, explain himself, like keep trying to say, uh, it wasn't me. I know you haven't seen them, so you don't believe, you. well, you don't believe me. Um, I get that. But, um, you know, Maria's not having any of it. And so... All of a sudden, we get uh, what seems like an earthquake, but as soon as uh, Maria hears this, she tells them they're close. Get uh, get down and don't move. And then we see all these monkey-looking creatures just swinging through through all this vegetation. And if you remember, th these creatures are actually one of the creatures that attacked Nathan in the first issue. If you remember, he almost got eaten by one, but he ended up stabbing himself with his transport dart and escaping. So uh, after after those creatures leave, 
uh, the group, the group gathers themselves together and turns out Keith has escaped. I don't know how, I don't know how he escaped without getting eaten, but, you know, uh, we'll see, we'll see what happens there. Um, anyway, uh, Maria says, you know, let him go. We have our mission, we have our mission and, you know, what is this mission exactly? Are they after Nathan or are they, um, cause they know who he is or what he is, the hooded man. So they've seen him before. And so, um, oh, right. Uh, even at the end of issue one, we see that there's this group that was spying on him. And I'm wondering if this group is actually part of that, uh, you know, spy group. Anyway, now we're back to, uh, Nathan back on earth. And, um, he's back in his apartment getting, kind of getting ready for the day. And one of my favorite things here is he's drinking coffee out of a mug that has a periodic table on it. I mean, I'm, I'm geeking out about that, but it, it's pretty cool. Anyway, so Nathan goes out and takes a taxi to this, uh, storage f facility, this like storage shed facility. And, uh, turns out he's actually being watched even here on earth, like as is he's being, he's being watched, uh, in oblivion. Now he's being watched on earth. So what's going on? Who, who's looking for him exactly? Then we switch over to Duncan and Bridget and Duncan is waking up from a, uh, nightmare or he's, he's have rather, he's having a night terror and he's saying, he's just screaming, shouting, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. And, uh, Bridget trying to like get through to him. Um, but she, narrowly dodges a lamp that was thrown at her and she's after this she's just terrified uh duncan finally snaps out of it and he's like i'm sorry i'm so sorry i i was asleep it wasn't i didn't mean to like and obviously bridget understands and they uh you know embrace each other you know she uh trying to comfort each other but what is this how long is this gonna go because Obviously, she it's taking a toll on her. I mean, as is, she's still seeing that other guy that she was seeing when she thought Duncan was dead or, you know, didn't know what happened to Duncan. And so I'm curious as to how long, you know, they're going to stay together, honestly. Now we're back to Nathan, who's um, in his uh, storage unit, and he's working on some kind of device. Or I'm not sure exactly what it is, but he seems frustrated because it... I guess it's not working or he's uh, not getting it right. I don't know. But he stops himself from like trashing it and decides to leave for the day. But what is this device exactly? Is it something to try and, uh, I don't know, bring uh, that section of the city back? Or is it, I don't know. I mean, it just, it looks kind of funky. Anyway, now we're back with uh, Duncan and Bridget and they're back at their little lab in uh the i forgot what it was called the dead zone or or so uh the part of uh philadelphia where uh oblivion was transferred to and so there's another i guess uh episode where uh bridget's trying to talk to duncan but duncan's kind of off in, a, in another world <laughs> it's funny huh and um she's like duncan duncan like yelling like hey can you hear me what's wrong uh, and he, and he yells at her saying like, why are you yelling at me? But obviously Bridget's still a little shaken up from last night and, uh, she leaves. She needs to step out and, uh, you know, she's emotional. It's, it's not, it's not an easy thing to have to, uh, deal with or go through. And so while she's, you know, taking a moment, uh, Nathan finds her and so... Uh, he's ready to go back, uh, go back out there. And so he convinces Bridget to take him out. And while they're driving, Bridget, you know, confides in him saying, I'm really worried about him because, uh, he doesn't seem to be getting better. It's been years now. And, um, what is it? Like, I don't know what he's been through and I could, how can I ever really know? Um, but you know, she's, kind of venting to him in general and so Nathan suggests well why doesn't he go to like a support group they have those especially for the survivors of oblivion but apparently he doesn't want to do that that she's tried to 
talk to him and he just gets pissed off when when she brings it up but you know uh nathan encourages her saying maybe he needs to be pissed off you know but you can't give up on him and so uh he they stop at a certain section and he transfers into oblivion which is actually the same spot where he uh transferred out of before dunk uh, i mean uh keith almost shot him and so he's waiting a bit and here we get another uh, amazing sp spread of Oblivion where these horse-like creatures get ambushed by these giant uh, bird dragon things. I don't know what they are, but I mean, they're big enough to grab one of these things that are as big as a horse off the ground and fly off with them like an eagle with a rabbit or something, you know? Um, and while Nathan is kind of waiting for something to happen, he hears someone calling for help. So he run, of course, being the hero, he runs af after the voice, but he gets caught in a trap. And turns out uh, the group that we met, we met last issue and in the beginning of this issue has finally caught up to him. And so um, Maria is there and, he, and she, tells, um, she tells her men to restrain him. Uh, but, but before they do that, they kind of beat the shit out of him and finally, you know, tie him up. But before before they can really, you know, explain anything, another huge monster jumps in and whew, this thing is I'm, I'm loving these creatures. They're just the the creative, the creativity going into these creatures and into the into the background of Oblivion. It's just ugh, OK, enough gushing anyway. So. After after the monster passes, um, they start to, uh, talking. Well, Maria starts talking to uh, Nathan, and turns out that they're going to take him back to well their base uh, outside of the city. And so, um, one of the one of the guys gets a little too uh, handsy, you know, just uh, being a little too uh, brutal. It's just um, beating beating up on Nathan, and uh, Maria stops him and says, "Dane, Ed's not going to want to want our prisoner unable to speak when we get him back. Knock it off." And of course, Nathan is looking for Ed, which is his brother, and so he's like, "I well," he says, "I'm looking for Ed." Uh, guys, listen, you can keep me handcuffed if you want, but I want to go back with you. Um, I'm looking for Ed, and for all of you, he says, uh, "I think." he might be my brother and so uh the issue ends with maria saying wait you're nathan or are you nathan and <laughs> and we get another uh the last two panels of nathan like like surprised that this is being confirmed that he that he actually found his brother and he smiles saying yes yes i am and first off look at these look at these panels Th this is the most detail um into these characters faces that we've gotten throughout this whole series at least i i think and it's just amazing but uh, between uh lorenzo di felici and annalisa leone you guys are doing something right because i i'm still i'm still gushing about your art and so that's the end of the issue and i was actually lucky enough to get a letter printed in this in this issue after what two two issues of letters pages i'm gonna move my mic a little bit and so i start with Hey Oblivion Song Team, once again congratulations on an amazing series release. I've heard nothing but great things and I have been saying uh, nothing but great things. So glad, so glad to be a part of it. I'm pretty worried for Nathan as well. He seems way too pressed to actually want to keep going back to that dimension. Is Oblivion the name of this other dimension? Did they ever have some kind of code for it? Or, you know, I'm, I feel it should have a name if I haven't missed it already, which it is called Oblivion. But Robert Robert Kirkman replies, uh, actually bringing up a good point. Um, they call it Earth. From their perspective, the group that's uh, stuck in Oblivion, from their perspective, they stayed on Earth and everything outside the city uh, was changed. So I continue with Mr. Felici and Miss Leone. Y'all are hitting this book out of the park. I absolutely adore your art and it complements the story so well. Uh, you get you did a great job finding these two, uh, Robert. And Robert replies with credit to Corey Walker on that. So Corey Walker was actually the co-creator and 
uh, artist for a bit on Invincible before uh, Ryan Otley stepped in. And so uh, I finish with, can't wait for next issue. Do we have a name for this page yet? How about song notes? I know it's cheesy, uh, kind of cheesy, I know, but each song has them and Oblivion Song needs them too. I tried, okay? It was off the top of my head and I, um, I've i only seen a, a handful of people suggesting names. So, you know, it, it was worth the shot. Anyway, so Robert Kirkman replies with, you guys, see, you guys see what I'm talking about with these letters column names? Because he starts the letter, the column with, um, full disclosure, we're looking for a name for this letters column. And so far, the suggestions we're getting are just not neat enough. Um, I don't want to say lame, but I just implied that I think most of them are lame. <laughs> so, uh, you know, he's they're still looking for a letters page name. And so he continues with, you guys see what I'm talking about with these letters column names? Song notes? Come on, Andy. I know you can do better than that. Or I know you can do better. But then you already have that statue, don't you? Because he's actually, um, well, you know, he's teasing that he'll give away uh, one of the uh, collector's edition uh, statues that came with the first issue or that you can buy with the first issue. And so he's, you know, hinting that he can, that he'll be giving away one of those uh, to whoever comes up with a good letters name. And, you know, it's it's just interesting. He sa he continues with, uh, you already have that statue, don't you? I've seen you unbox it on YouTube. He's seen it. He's seen the video. Awesome. I'm happy. Whoa. Anyway. In fact, there's probably not a lot that could be put into a box of Skybound swag that you don't already have. Uh, thanks for all the support and send some more send some more names. We'll find something you don't have already. And so, you know, I'm I'm just more trying to you know trying to figure out a name for the columns because I you know I would like to contribute to that. That would be pretty cool. Anyway, um, so yeah, I mean, if you guys have any uh, cool letters uh, column names, you know, send them in because you know. You guys could get you guys could get one of those statues too if you haven't, and so yeah, that's the end of the that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, drop a like, show the love, hit that subscribe button to get more of my videos, ring the bell to get notifications of when I post new videos, so that way you guys stay updated and don't miss out. And um, anything you guys want to discuss, you know, throw them down in the comments. I'm always open. And yeah, until next time, bye.